lecture 43 beta and gamma function as you know the gamma n we have integration 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx now if you want to write gamma n plus 1 it means we write 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power we replace that n with n plus 1 means here you write n plus 1 so we write n plus 1 minus 1 dx so now the integral becomes 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n dx now apply the integration so how we write we take the first and second function the first function we take is x raised to power n x raised to power n and the integration of e raised to power minus x we get minus sign 0 to infinity minus integration the derivative of the first function that is n x raised to power n minus 1 the integration of second function that is minus e raised to power minus x and that the integration of this term 0 to infinity now apply the limit when you apply the limit e raised to power minus infinity we get 0 when you apply 0 x that is 0 raised to power 0 is 0 so that factor become 0 now that minus sign we get plus n and take out outside the integral we write n integration 0 to infinity x raised to power x um, n minus 1 e raised to power minus x dx so this integral we can write e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx now if you see this is what this become gamma n right so we prove the relation that that is mean gamma gamma n plus 1 we can write n gamma n so if we uh, we prove that relation gamma n plus 1 we write n gamma n so if we have on the place of n plus 1 if we have n plus 2 so we write what do you write we write n by plus 1 gamma n plus 1 you just subtract minus 1 from that and write in that form or if you expanding that particular means if you apply the for that relation on gamma n so you write what so you write here if you delete that and we just expand that one so we can write if we apply the same formula on gamma n relation so gamma n be written as n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 so we write n minus 1 gamma n minus 1 now the same relation you apply on gamma n minus 1 means on the place of n plus 1 we substitute n minus 1 so what happened we write n n minus 1 we just subtract one more in that term so we write n minus 2 gamma n minus 2 and similarly in that way if you are expanding so n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 and so on it will be expanded up to 1 2 1 gamma 1 so in that way you can expand the gamma function similarly similar as the factorial function so you easily remember by the help of the factorial function so there is also relation between the gamma and the factorial function which will be discussed further so please remember that relation and also there are two more points here you have to note it that that is gamma 1 is 1 and gamma 0 is infinity and if we write gamma minus 1 so it become negative if that is a negative integer if this is negative integer so please remember these relations 
so please remember that relation that is what gamma n plus 1 we write n gamma n and by the help of that relation we also uh, define the relation between gamma and the factorial all of you know the about the factorial so if we expand if you want to expand suppose gamma 5 so how we write we just subtract 5 minus 1 that is 4 so we write 4 gamma 4 then we apply the same formula on the 4 so we write 4 minus 1 that is 3 so we write 4 3 gamma 3 and similarly we apply the formula on gamma 3 so we write 4 3 2 gamma 2 and in the similar way 4 3 2 1 gamma 1 and as you know the gamma value of the gamma 1 is 1 so we write 4 3 2 1 so in that way you can expand the gamma 5 so if you know the uh, if you remember the formula of the factorial so that would be right what factorial 4 so it means gamma 5 is equal to actually factorial 4 so there be a relation that would be uh, gamma if you write the gamma n plus 1 it means it is equal to factorial n so that's the relation between the gamma and the factorial so please remember that relation also and that one now some pro basic property of the gamma function so first you have to know the you have to remember the gamma function that's in gamma function gamma n is equal to what we write 0 to infinity e raised to power minus in minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx that integral you say is a gamma for gamma n so one thing you have to remember if we write here n so we write gamma n if we write here m so we write gamma n m so in that way we write that gamma function so there are uh, basic some basic property of the gamma function the first one gamma n upon lambda raised to power n that that means if we have an integral 0 to infinity e raised to power minus lambda y y raised to power n minus 1 dy so what we write we write gamma n upon lambda that's in coefficient of that e raised to power y that is lambda lambda raised to power n second property if we have an integral 0 to infinity e raised to power minus z power 1 by n dz it may be dx you can also write uh, on the place of z or with x so that integral we write gamma n plus 1 and the next one if we have an integral 0 to 1 log 1 upon x raised to power n minus 1 dx so that is also a gamma n so I also show you how to prove this property so you understand how to apply the gamma function so let's start the first property now see that property we have to prove 0 to infinity e raised to power minus lambda y y raised to power n minus 1 dy is gamma n upon lambda raised to power n so how to prove that property as you know we know gamma n is what 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx now we just assume that's the equation 1 now here you put x is equal to lambda y if you put x is equal to some new variable lambda y so dx is replaced with what lambda dy now and the limit is also changed so so gamma n is equal to we write if we put 0 so we get limit 0 if we put infinity so we get the limit infinity so here e raised to power lambda y in the place of x we write lambda y raised to power n minus 1 on the place of dx we write lambda dy now 0 to infinity here e raised to power lambda y lambda raised to power n minus 1 y raised to power n minus 1 into lambda dy so the power of the lambda is become lambda raised to power n minus 1 plus 1 so we get and that's in constant we consider so we write lambda power 1 0 to infinity e raised to power lambda y y raised to power n minus 1 dy that is gamma n and we just put in the denominator so we write 
gamma n upon lambda raised to power n we get 0 to infinity e raised to power lambda y y raised to power n minus 1 dy so here you have to remember that if suppose we have an integration 0 to infinity e raised to power minus 3 x x raised to power 4 minus 1 dx so directly we write the value of that integration is what gamma 4 upon 3 raised to power 4 that's the value of that integration there is no need to write don't no need to no need to expand the integration or doing the integration you directly write that value of that integral so that's an uh, application of that particular property of gamma function now let's discuss the second property that's the third property if we have an integral 0 to 1 log 1 upon x raised to power 1 n minus 1 dx so we write gamma n so as you know the standard formula of the gamma n is what 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx here you just put e raised to power minus x is equal to says we take just t so minus e raised to power minus x dx is equal to dt so on the place of dx we write dt upon e raised to power minus x that that become t so we write dx is equal to minus dt upon e raised to power minus n that is we write t so we write minus dt upon t on the place of dx substitute in that one so here we get now the limit when you put the limit e raised to power 0 some e raised to power 0 it become 1 and when we put e raised to power minus infinity e raised to power minus infinity is what 0 so we get 0 now this become t and on the place of x what we write we write minus x is equal to we write log t and x is equal to we get 1 upon t by the property of log now so, so on the place of that we write log 1 upon t whole power n minus 1 and on the place of dx we write minus dt upon t so here t is cancelled and that's negative sign so as you know the property of the integration if we change the limit upper to lower so we can write 0 to 1 we get a negative sign and that negative become positive so we write log 1 upon t whole power n minus 1 dt so hence proved the property it means the integration 0 to 1 log 1 upon x whole power n minus 1 dx can be written as gamma n the second property gamma n plus 1 we write 0 to infinity e raised to power minus z raised to power 1 by n dz so the value of that integral we write the gamma n plus 1 so how to prove that property so here you just take as you know the gamma n what we write the integration 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x x raised to power n minus 1 dx that's in gamma n so if you put x raised to power n is equal to z so here n x raised to power n minus 1 dx is equal to dz so on the that place we write dz upon n now it means we can write 0 to infinity and e raised to power z raised to power 1 by n that we can write x is equal to z raised to power 1 by n into on that place we write dz upon n and the limit is 0 to infinity the same limit x on the place of x if you put 0 so we get the limit 0 and infinity we get the limit infinity so here here that is in gamma n and if that is constant so you just 
multiply that term n gamma n is what 0 to infinity e raised to power minus z is to power 1 upon n dz and as you know the relation gamma n plus 1 is what is n gamma n so we can write this is what gamma n plus 1 so we prove that property gamma n plus 1 is what 0 to infinity e raised to power minus z raised to power 1 by n dz so in that way we can prove the property and here you have to notice uh, this uh, if we have an integral suppose we have an integral 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x and is 1 upon 3 dx so we can directly write 3 gamma 3 plus 1 that is equal to gamma 4 so in that way we use that property there is one more important property that is gamma 1 by 2 the value of the gamma 1 by 2 is root pi so by the help of gamma function we can also expand the fractional uh, value not only integer so here how to prove that as we know the gamma n plus 1 is equal to 0 to infinity e raised to power minus z raised to power 1 by n d z so we have to expand the gamma 1 by 2 so put n is equal to 1 by 2 in that relation so we get gamma 3 by 2 is equal to 0 to infinity e raised to power minus and we get z square dz so if you remember what's the value of that integral that's an standard integral 0 to infinity e raised to power minus x square dx we get root pi by 2 so the value of that integral we get root pi by 2 so and gamma 3 by 2 if you expand that so what it mean 3 by 2 minus 1 3 by 2 minus 1 what we get 1 by 2 so we write 1 by 2 gamma 1 by 2 that's 2 cancel so we can say the value of gamma 1 by 2 is root pi so by the help of that formula we can also find the value of 5 by 2 3 by 2 and so on